So first things first, I've got my bony rig right here. And the next thing that I want to do, of course, is add an image plane. I'm going to go to import image. I'm going to go to my desktop where I have the key pose references. And of course, I have it in perspective view. So let me get rid of that. Delete that. Make sure that we're in the side view. And uh, don't feel like you guys are obligated or committed to. Okay, sweet. So Jessica just got back to me. Okay. Um, as long as you can see it, that works. Okay, perfect. So um, go into the side view, left view. Go to image plane, import image from my desktop. And just like I was saying, you guys, um, you're not beholden to view these videos. If you guys have other obligations, I'll be at family. If you guys have other assignments that are due now, um, please prioritize this. This is literally just to help you guys. And I'll be uploading a condensed video version of this as well. So let me go back to perspective view. And of course, it's off in the distance. So what I'm going to do is Go to translate. I'm just going to press zero right here. That way it recenters. And I'm just going to move this because this is a lot faster to do than if we were to have this off in the distance. So the next thing, um, and again, totally um, on me for not mentioning this for the walk cycle. We want to move the background image not the rig, especially for a cycle. Because if we're playing a video game, this main controller right here, this is what determines um, the movement essentially. So you want to make sure that this isn't moved. The whole character can be moved if you want to right here, but make sure we're not moving this right here. And then, thank you guys for being patient again because I'm using my Windows PC and keys are super awkward to me. So, uh, does anyone have any questions so far? No, so far so good? Okay, so um, after that, honestly, this is the easiest part. I like to move the image to the same place as the hip. So see how the, the hip is matching the, the rig right here? Let's click on that. And then literally all I'm gonna do is start moving everything so that it matches. And that's it. Put this down. Um, another huge thing that's gonna help you guys is making sure that if we look right here, um, I gave this note to almost everybody. Make sure that the knee is slightly bent. The reason being, if it's completely straight, if we press down ever so slightly, it automatically snaps. Do you guys see how quick that does? If we make sure it's bent ever so slightly, see how the transition from this to this is a lot easier than this to this? So make sure that it's bent ever so slightly. And then this is where it gets really easy. Uh, do you guys remember the box that I had mentioned where you can click on this little yellow box right here? I'll zoom in so it's easier for you guys to see on your cell phone. This little box right here, if I press, no, it doesn't help. Yeah, this box right here, I can click on that box, or box, hold it down, and then literally just move the leg to exactly where I want it to go. And I just rotate the foot, and look how quick that was. So I already have pretty much the foundation of this first pose in literally like what, a few seconds? So this is this is honestly gonna be the most time consuming, but once you get this down, the rest of the animation's easy. So just remember, uh, really quickly guys, 
do not move the main controller. Make sure you move the actual image in the background. So I'm going to go back to my actual workflow and make sure that this is in perspective and that this is going to be in the left view. Okay, so um, now that we have that, um, I already taught you guys to create a separate layer in this box right here. Um, this is especially for um, more complicated rigs with way more controls than you need. Um, if you guys haven't noticed already, you can actually just select all of the keys at once and then deselect the main controller. And if I press S, it maintains all of that animation. Um, one thing that I also wanted to mention really quick, um, again, my fault, my bad. Um, I should have explained for the walking reference that there is a lot more than seven poses for this run cycle. So if we look at this reference, we have contact one and contact seven. This is contact seven on the opposite side. This is not the complete animation. So what's happening right after this one is now frames, uh, frame eight has now become the opposite of this right here down. So we're basically gonna animate the first half of the animation and then the second half of the animation is going to be everything that we see here, but on the other side of the body. Does everyone understand that? Okay, cool, 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 cool. All right, so after that, I've got that first pose. And the cool thing about the run pose is it's actually easier than the walk. There's less or less frames that you have to worry about. So what we're going to do is now just move this. Move this right here, try to get it in line with the waist. Make sure that we're in frame two. Do not animate the same frame. Don't don't pull a Rudy. Don't make Rudy mistakes. Okay, so now, just like I was mentioning earlier, uh, we can actually use this little square right here just to move the waist exactly where we want it. And same with the feet. I'm just going to rotate this and move it back. Select this other foot controller. And look, super, super quick. And then just do that. There you go. And that's, um, that's essentially frame, frame two now. So what I'm going to do right now, um, I'm just going to breeze through this. I'm literally just going to follow all of the reference. But notice I have not touched the hands yet. Um, I'm not touching the arms. I just want to make sure that the feet work correctly. And then I'm going to play the feet. Um, and actually, to make sure that I don't touch the arms, because I know myself, I'm just going to get rid of the arms. And that's to make sure that the feet are working first, because... Um, Oh, yeah. Oftentimes what happens is we'll animate the arms and the legs, but if the if the feet aren't working, sometimes we'll usually have to reanimate the hands all together. So anytime we tackle any any animation, any animation, always make sure that the feet are solid, that they're like they're seamless, they're good, they're clean, and then we can go on to the arms. Because the last thing you want is your art director to tell you, um, these feet they're completely off, so you're gonna have to change the entire animation because some people animate the arms to the feet. So uh, this is good. Again, just to be safe, I'm gonna select everything except for the main controller, press E, and then move on to the next frame. So frame three, I'm just gonna move it down, make sure that the waist is matching to the best of the ability. And remember, the down pose is the lowest that the animations should be. So what I'm going to do is lift this up just a little bit. 
because nothing should be lower than the down pose. And then, same thing, foot. Just gonna find where the heel is. Match it to the best of my ability. And don't be Rudy, let's select the main controller. And um, if you guys see this right here, see how the angle of the, the leg is very, very different from my reference. It's okay to move up your reference a little bit so that it matches the angle significantly better. Um, angles actually play a huge role in, um, in making sure that the reference looks very, very close. Um, to the animation. So, if we just kind of look at what we have so far. How do you guys feel about that? So far, so good. Okay, so now I have a first pose, second pose, a third pose. Now I'm going to move the reference image. Go back in my left view move the reference image. I'm gonna try to match the waist to the best of my ability. And then, um, I, again, want to progressively move my way up to the final uh, fifth pose. And then I'm gonna move my leg. And here's another thing to hopefully help you guys with um, with your walking animation. If you guys see the reference right here, the the toes are bent just like we would in, uh, in running. Our toes are bent to still give us enough balance to move on to the next pose. So if you guys didn't know this already, if we click on the foot controller, there is options right here on the very side to actually play with the toes. So the foot tilt, for instance, if I play with that, I'm now tilting the feet via this controller. And uh, just be very, very careful with these. I'm honestly very reluctant to use these because um, it's very easy to crash Maya. So before I get too excited, I'm gonna save the file uh, just on my desktop. Um, please be sure to do this. Don't re don't forget. Please remember to save before you start touching these modules on the side right here. Um, these crash Maya like almost every time. Okay, so um, going back to this, uh, I'm literally just going to match the poses. Like I had said earlier, make sure that. The, um, the pose doesn't make the legs straight. Because if I do this and if I bend the, the body immediately, it immediately snaps really, really quickly. So I'm just gonna go back to this, go back to the heel ball. And um, unfortunately with this rig, they literally don't have toes. So, um, just be mindful of that. And then have it bend ever so slightly. That's probably the closest I'm gonna go. Okay. And then, uh, like I mentioned, um, don't be a Rudy, because it looks like I just did uh, frame four. <laughs> yeah, this is frame five. Yeah, so don't don't do that. Don't don't be me. Okay, so let's just go back really quick. This is frame four. Let's go to frame five. Really quickly, I'm just gonna repeat this really quick. Add a slight bend. Okay. 
and then I'm going to match the angle again. Okay, so uh, again, select everything. I'm going to key this. I'm on the fifth frame. Don't do what I did. And that's actually looking pretty good. So now I'm going to be coming down back to the contact pose for the next leg. Um, make sure that we're moving the reference back to match the, the hip. And then this is um, this is the airborne pose. So this is where you're actually off the ground. And for this one, I'm actually going to make sure that the heel ball is on zero. Go ahead and rotate the foot. And again, I want to try to match that angle to the best of my ability. The angle of the knee that you guys can see right here. Um, again, I don't want to have to match it too too well because look honestly look what happens if I try moving the foot I just I lose that angle completely. So it's not worth doing that Just try to match the angle of the knee or um, in this case um, Yeah, the knee joint same will go for the arms when I actually go to the arms I would rather get the angle correct than have the the actual wrist at the exact point So just keep that in mind Okay, let me actually make sure. Okay, yeah, I'm on frame six. Okay. So and now I'm going to try to match the same angle again as this knee. And I'm actually going to rotate my body a little bit forward because gravity is actually pushing my body forward and I don't actually move my back up straight until I catch myself on the down pose. So I'm going to move myself a little bit more forward. Go ahead and play that. That's looking pretty good. Again, just for safety measure, I'm going to select everything except for the main controller. Key that frame. And then I'm going to move on to the last pose, which is going to be the next contact. So I'm just moving my waist right here. And then again, I'm going to move my waist. Um, and then again, like I mentioned to you guys, it's okay to copy and paste. So what I'm going to do is select this waist control right here. I'm going to copy the first frame because it's literally the same um, height. I'm going to go to frame seven. I'm just going to paste that. So now I have the exact same um, height as I do for the first contact. And that's honestly just going to make life easier. Now in a perfect world, humans don't actually do that. They don't exactly match the same down. So if you want to, you can adjust it ever so slightly, move it back, I don't know, uh, but just keep that in mind. Um, if you want something more realistic, technically your down wouldn't be exactly the same. And the cool thing is, is now I get to show you guys the same thing for the walk. I can now go back to this first frame over here. And because the seventh frame is exactly the same on the opposite side as the first frame, I'm just going to copy this foot. Go ahead and copy this right here. Copy that foot. And I'm going to go to this foot. Paste it. And now you can see that the angle looks totally off. Sure, that's right. Yeah, hold on. Yeah, 
Yeah, okay. So I'll copy this frame. Copy the first frame. Select the other foot. Paste that one. And um, just like I had mentioned earlier, you'll have to play with some of these attributes because it's going to be the opposite. You guys see what I did right there? Okay, so I'll, I'll do that again just in case you guys are curious. Because it's the opposite foot, technically, um, and I'll give you guys a little demonstration of what I'm talking about, front view. Um, just like in math, um, as far as graphs go, everything on this side right here is positive. Everything on this side here is negative. So the attributes on this foot are literally technically the opposite as this foot right here. So if you guys see what I did, see how the foot really didn't move front and back? I just have to make sure that instead of positive or negative, it's going to be positive. So I'm literally just getting rid of the negative sign and putting positive, and now it's in the correct place. So if I cycle back, back to the left view, um, you'll see that this foot is going to be in the exact same place as this one right here. Watch this. Same exact place. Cool stuff, right? Math. <laughs> All right, so um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much that part right there. Let me, let me go ahead and move this foot. Um, you can, if you want to, copy and paste the same way. Um, but I'm literally just going to move this foot like this. And if I go ahead and look at it, it's close enough. Technically, our feet aren't perfect. Mm -hmm but I'm pretty satisfied with that. Yeah, that's good enough for me. Okay, so that's um, that's honestly the first half. Do you guys have any questions right now in regards to um, and to what I did so far? I'll just play this, this first seven seconds or frames so you guys can see what I did. You see that even though it's um, it's only seven frames, it still looks like a solid walk or a run cycle, right? So I just have to fix the other side. But yeah, honestly, I'll, I'll be completely honest. The run, in my opinion, is significantly easier than the walk cycle. It's literally just following these frames. And luckily, the reference I gave you um, has the arms too, so you don't really have to worry about um, fishing for the correct arms. Um, yeah, oh my god, we got plenty of time. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to finish the rest of this.